Hey, what is going on, guys? Rudlinell here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, let's get the Windows command line ready to roll, along with Notepad++. And you know what? We can get back to doing some programming, writing some cool code. KK, I'm, I'm sorry, CC. CC. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to go too far with that one. Okay, but uh, you know, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some of the code that we actually wrote in the last video, and we're going to try and make it just a little bit better because we are pragmatic programmers and like to make things like we really like to make things as efficient as possible, as efficient as possible. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just so excited I can't even speak. Let's hop on over to our text editor and let's create a new script. And it's kind of just going to breeze right through what we made in the last video. Add echo off. Remember, I always have a problem with writing all this stuff. I'm probably a terrible programmer. <laughs> Go to the end of file, and we're going to want to remember to put in the set local and end local commands in here. And because, you know, I forgot to do that in the last video, I think. Let's echo out hello world to keep things real easy. And now I'm going to set some variables. Food can equal 50. Okay. Just quickly, just breezing through everything that we did earlier. Set people. We want it to be a dash a tag, so we know it's an integer. People can be five. Actually, people can be ten. And then rations are what we want to be five. And uh, set dash a. All food can be the value of people times the value of rations. Okay, now we can stop our if statement. If food is greater than or equal to the food that we need, we can go ahead and say, echo, we have a good amount of food. We can throw an else statement in there while we're at it. Echo, we do not have enough food. And now we'll add our, our little nested if statement in here. If all food is less than... Was it food or was it all food? I, I don't know. If the food that we need is less than... Okay, yeah, the food that we're going to be... The food that we have. If the food that we consume is less than the food that we have, then we have enough. For all people, people. Throw an else statement in there. Okay, now we can echo out. Food for all these people. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what we got here. Let's run our script. Hello world, we have a good amount of food, but we do not have enough food for all these people. Alright, something's wrong here. We want to use less than or equal to, remember, because 50 is equal to 50, and uh, we want to have enough. So, we have a good amount of food, and we have enough food for all 10 people. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, now let's take a look at what we can uh, what we can do to improve this program. So, uh, right at the beginning we have echo off, go to main, there's not really too much we can do in there, but in main we set up a local scope, we just echo out some output so we know what we're doing, we set all the variables here, food is 50, need is food is 50, people is 10, okay, I'm sure you guys get the idea, all food is right here, <clears throat> and uh, if we need all the, if we get the food that we need, then uh, we can, we're okay to run this, but and that's the only segment where we actually use all food, though. We don't actually use all food right down here in our else statement. So if this statement isn't true, we don't even need this variable. So would it would it be a better idea to put this variable inside the if statement so to create it only if we actually need it? Let's go ahead and try that. Set all food equal. Okay, now let's uh, let's try and run this. Hello world. 50 was unexpected this time. Uh, what? <laughs> what? What is the matter here? We're setting the variable that we want right before we actually test it. At least that's what it seems like, right? 
What you guys have to remember is that when we're using these uh, parentheses and we're grouping all of these commands, remember these these commands are, are grouped. They're actually one command. So this we're, we aren't creating this variable until the very end of all this stuff. So we don't actually get to examine it right in here. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Let's... The thing is, we can't use this variable inside of the code block right now. So we have to be able to prevent this. We have to we have to be able to create this variable inside of the uh, the conditional statement and inside of our code block. These uh this group commands here. Now what we do is we uh, enable something called delayed variable expansion, and all that really does is allow us to use these to use these variables that we create inside parentheses or group commands. Like when we're working in a compound statement like this, if whether it be an if statement or a for loop or any other sort of loop or any compound statement, you can use and create variables. You can create new variables. And the way we set this up is at the very beginning of our script, we add set local, just like we have before, but we actually pass in an argument and it's enable delayed expansion. All one word. Now when we're using delayed expansion, uh, the way we access the variables is a little different as well. Uh, we don't really have to actually do this, but we ec if we echo out all food, we can try and run this, switch back over to my uh, command line here. Hello world, 50 was unexpected this time, so we need, to, we need to do something a little differently. The way we actually access these variables now is using a uh, exclamation point. We use an exclamation point surrounding these uh, surrounding the variable names rather than a percent sign. Now, usually in our case, we're actually only going to need to use this for this variable, but it's a good practice to get into for all the other variables that we create. Because if we're going to be using this sort of syntax a lot more often now, because we know that we can use this power of delayed variable expansion and set the variables where we want to be able to set them, we're going to be using these uh, these exclamation points. So if we run this, we can actually change all these right here. I'll just quickly run through and change these. I think I can actually use a control F replace. Can I do that? Replace all these percent signs with exclamation point, replace all. Eight occurrences were replaced. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Now if we run this, we're echoing out 50 because uh, we told it to do that. And uh, we can actually close that right here. We don't really need that. But we've successfully, if we check it out, we can run this one more time. Hello world, we have a good amount of food, and we have enough food for all ten people. So we have successfully created this variable inside of uh, our code block. What we've done is we avoided the problem that we were preaching, that we were uh, approaching earlier. And the way we've done that is we've enabled delayed expansion, delayed variable expansion. And we'll normally want to put this at the beginning of all the batch scripts that we work with. This is because uh, we can use it and set it up for other. Uh, it's sort of like it's a global thing we can use in all the functions and uh, everything that we create inside the batch script. But Remember, and keep in mind that we're using these exclamation points to be able to access these things now, rather than the percent signs. But, if you guys take a, a closer look at the script here, I'll run the script one more time. We say hello world at the very beginning, but in our code, we actually wanted to say hello world with that exclamation point. And I'm sure you guys can figure out, since we're using exclamation points here, the uh, the batch interpreter gets a little bit confused whether or not we're trying to uh, actually get a variable or not. So we have to escape this exclamation point. And uh, I'm sure you guys would think of using uh, a single caret, like, I'm sh like I taught you guys in a previous video. But that still doesn't do anything. But if we actually use that in quotes, it will work. So that's a little strange. But if we don't use those quotes, we want to be using two carrots. It's the shift formation uh, of the six on your keyboard. Now if we run this, we can see hello world with the exclamation point. So we actually have to escape this when we're using uh, delayed variable expansion. So this is a little bit quirky and obviously you wouldn't have to have this sort of setup in any other programming or scripting languages like Python or C++, but it's a whole other tactic that Batch has and it, it's sort of like a workaround for actually creating the variables inside a compound statement or like a grouped command. But uh, I hope you guys were able to understand this. This is a new syntax, and the way we're going to be working with things is a little bit different from this point on. But hey, if you guys can just remember putting this at the very beginning of your batch file, along with using these exclamation points rather than the percent signs from now on, we should be in good shape. 
Uh, thank you guys for watching, though. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this video. Let me know what you guys think of this whole series in general. If you could leave me a comment, I would really, really appreciate that. It lets me gauge what you guys like to see and what you like to hear. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're feeling generous, go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> that, would, uh, that would certainly make my day. Goodbye, guys.